Are you visiting Universal Orlando in 2024 and need a helpful video? This is the one. Hey, what's going on everybody? Rick here. And these are the tried and true best tips for Universal Orlando Resort. The first tip is to use the height board. Each theme park has one, studios and islands of adventure. Measure the kids before they get inside the park. That way expectations can be set. It's better to find out here if the child is too small for a ride than at the entrance to the attraction. I have an alert for 2024. Starting this year, no more paper maps. You must use the mobile app. We'll talk more about the app throughout this video. And look at this, another sign to help us give you a tip. Use early park admission if available to you. Early park admission is not available for everyone. It is for annual pass holders and Universal Hotel guests. Early park admission gives you about a one hour head start on the rest of the park's guests. Early park admission will vary depending on the theme park. Sometimes it's just Islands of Adventure, sometimes it's studios, sometimes like right now it's both. Now Volcano Bay does have early park admission itself. Its early park admission is about a 30 minute head start. But I do need to warn you, not all rides will be open for early park admission. Despicable Me Minion Mayhem is one of the attractions that is usually open for early park admission. And this is the best time to do it because the wait time is only five minutes. Later today, that could get up to 120 minutes. Now, if you do not have access to early park admission, you're not an annual pass holder, you're not staying at a Universal Hotel, we just advise get into the park as early as you can. Exactly, make sure to plan and prioritize the rides that you wanna do first and hit those up right away. Yeah, I would say like do the most popular rides first. Oh yeah. Another tip would be to download the Universal app. You find show times, ride wait times, and it's great for mobile ordering food. But wait, that's not all when it comes to the Universal app. No, make sure you have your wallet set up ahead of time so that you have your debit card in there mm -hmm. and that you kind of you're familiar with it. Oh, you can load your tickets and passes in there too. Exactly. So yeah. it all makes things a lot easier if it's all done ahead of time. And you can play around with it outside the park. So if you're in Idaho and you have the app, you can still check on the wait time. So play around with it before you get here. Yeah. You know what? Can I revisit that early park admission thing, Nick? Sure, absolutely. We are here for early park admission. We're making our way to Diagon Alley. Yes. But here's the thing. You're on vacation. I understand if you don't want to use early park admission, if you want to sleep in, this is early for me. <laughs> You're on vacation, do it your way. Sleep in if you want to. Here's a tip that some of you may strongly consider using. That would be to purchase annual passes instead of just day passes. You get a ton of discounts on food and merchandise and parking. In fact, if you have the highest level annual pass like I do, the Premier Pass, you get free valet parking. I think the numbers support that if you're gonna visit for at least five days, it kind of works out financially just to get an annual pass. But most definitely, if you're gonna visit multiple times during the year, you know, just get that annual pass. And in regards to visiting multiple times, here's a tip for you plan to come during special events. So check the Universal website for those specific dates, but there's Mardi Gras, there's concerts, there's Christmas, and there's Grinchmas and the Macy's Parade. And our favorite, Halloween Horror Nights. The only warning about Halloween Horror Nights is that it is a separately ticketed event. It does not come with your price of admission. Right, all the other ones do, but HHN, different ticket. Hey look, we've made it to Louie's Pizza. We have a slice of advice here. This is sort of a money savings tip. Louis sells the jumbo slices of pizza. Save some money, cut it in half, share your pizza. Yeah, definitely find those things that are giant size here, like the big pink donut as well. That's definitely a shareable item. Cut some stuff in half, save half the money and half the calories. <laughs> That's true. Also, Louis has a walk-up window. So yeah. Take advantage of that walk-up window versus going and having a seat. If you're just going to grab a slice of pizza, yeah. there's seating outside as well. Yeah, the walk-up window has a limited menu, but definitely you can get a slice of pizza there. And since we're on the subject of food, might as well give you the tip to make restaurant reservations during the busy seasons. It can be done via the mobile app, in your hotel or the walk-up kiosks. Which is located at the front of the park. 
Here's one of my favorite tips. Visit Shea Alcatraz after 11 a.m. and get yourself the Ocean Attack. It's the most popular drink here and it comes with a show. Yes, and there's also a kid version, so it's a non-alcoholic one as well. Awesome. And look what's located by Shea Alcatraz, Bruce the Shark, the best photo opportunity in the park. Yes, and if you want to know all the best photo spots at both Islands of Adventure and Universal Studios, we have a video on it. So check the description box below for all the details. How about some Wizarding World tips, specifically for Diagon Alley? The first tip is a big one. How do you get into Diagon Alley? I see a lot of muggles looking lost. The night bus points the way right through those brick walls. That's how you enter Diagon Alley. One thing a lot of people like to do in Diagon Alley is to get a shot of the dragon spinning that's fire. I should let you know, that happens about every 10 minutes unless it's too windy. Make sure to take your time and walk through and enjoy the ambiance of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Whether it's the sounds, the sights, or the smells, or the drinks and snacks, um, definitely something that you want to take your time with. Yeah. Also, when you're in here, don't miss out on Nocturne Alley. A lot of people just walk right by it. Exactly. That's one not to miss. It's an awesome experience back there. And it has the best air conditioning. It really does. It's a good place to take a nap. If you need a break from the heat, <laughs> visit Nocturne Alley. Yeah. To fully enjoy the magical experience of the Wizarding World, we recommend getting an interactive wand. There are wand spots here in Diagon Alley and also in Hogsmeade. They're about $63. Hogwarts Express at King's Cross Station, a very fun attraction, but if you want to enjoy it, you need park-to-park -park tickets. Yeah, make sure to take the train to the parks both ways. It's a different experience each time. And it's the easiest way to travel between the two parks. Save your feet, get entertained. The best of both worlds. Well, I think app ratings a little easier. <laughs> but not everybody can do that. <laughs> Looking at MIB reminds me of an awesome tip. Many of the attractions here, such as MIB, they have free backstage tours. Absolutely, they are a lot of fun. We did a whole video on them with all the tips and tricks and everything you need to know on how to get one. I will leave a link to that video in the description box, but please, when you're here, try those out. They're super fun. Mm -hmm. And speaking of MIB and videos I've already done, I have done a tips and tricks video on how to score well on this attraction. It's always more fun if you can score well. Check out that video. Well, look at this. Another sign that reminds me of more advice we need to give you. There are free lockers that are standard size while you ride. Now, those lockers will fit a standard size or small backpack and your wand. There's also paid lockers that are $2 while you ride and $3 for every 30 minutes after. And would you believe this? I've done an entire video about lockers. Yes, you have. <laughs> I've done videos on so many things. <laughs> I will leave another link to the locker video in the description box. Exactly. So you have your homework, right? <laughs> you didn't know. We had like all type of appendices that comes to this video. <laughs> exactly. Well, the thing is, is that sometimes if you get a tip, you're just like, okay, well, I need more information. Yeah. We have that for you. Yeah. So check out the description box when you're done with this video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Real quick regarding no carry-on bags. Usually that does not apply to three-pronged fanny packs or bum bags. Now, it's the ones that go around your waist, right? right. So if you're doing the sling kind, mm -hmm. they might stop you. So just take it and kind of work it around your waist. Now, when it comes to the, the big roller coasters that have metal detectors, right. all bets are off. No bum bags, nothing whatsoever. You have to use a locker. You can't take your keys on it, anything like that. So just keep that in mind as well. Let's head inside this Coke Refreshment Center and get the lowdown on the refillable cups. When you buy more than one, it's cheaper per cup. You get three refills the day you buy it in all three of our parks until we close. And that would include free icy at the icy park, 
and you can bring them back another day and reactivate them for about eleven dollars each. And yes, I do have a whole video explaining the refillable freestyle cup program. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people take advantage of it and it's a great program. Now, just so you know, the hotels have a different like cup and refill situation yes. than in the parks. So right. don't think that it's gonna be transferable from one to the other. Now, it's for all the parks if you're doing the park one, but the hotel ones have their own. Right, and there's uh, throughout the theme parks, all these little like freestyle stations. Yes. And speaking of those Coke freestyle stations, I can't stand it any longer. We have to give you our number one tip when visiting Universal Orlando. Our best cost saving tip. And I think of everyone we run into when we're here, I think for our viewers, this is their favorite tip. Yes. Now, those uh, freestyle stations have free water and ice. They do. This is what you need to do. Instead of buying bottled water for like $3.50 to $5, that's what it costs here, Get these collapsible cups on Amazon. It's got a nice little lid on it. Bam. It's open. Yeah. And it's got like a wristlet for you as well. So you can attach it to your belt. So you can use these collapsible cups to um, get the free water from the uh, freestyle stations. My favorite part though is the lid to keep it clean. Yeah. While you're out and about. And look how, look how much that collapses down, kind of rotate that, Nikki, so we can see how thin it gets. Yep, goes in a back pocket really easy. You know what? I'm thirsty now. Let me demonstrate. Okay. Free water all day long. Now, here's a super secret tip when using that collapsible cup. The trick is, open it with a flourish. Like Rick does. <laughs> that way everyone around you notices how just smart you are to be using that cup. They're available on Amazon and we have a link to them, don't worry. The Simpsons ride made the list of top six rides to make you sick. I would like to mention you can get Dramamine from the first aid station here. It's located by Fast and Furious. Now here's a trick when it comes to Duff Brewery. It's too early right now, but often there's a line here that backs up way, like way back this way. The trick is, if seats are available, go grab a seat at the bar. They will serve you faster than the guy at the end of the line. It's just like walking up to a regular bar, guys. Don't wait in the long line. Grab one of these seats when they're available. The main street here in Springfield is called Fast Food Boulevard, and we have a tip for it. Lots of places to eat on Fast Food Boulevard, oddly enough. <laughs> uh, but I have found that using mobile order, especially during the busy season, on busy days, is a best practice. Oh yeah, it's definitely more efficient with the lines being as long as they are. Yeah, it, mainly inside of the, the restaurants here where they have like multiple different places to eat, mm -hmm. there's only one line. Exactly. So all those places have one line you have to get in. That's why mobile ordering is kind of a cheat. So again, be aware um, and familiar with the app and you know the mobile order process and have your card yeah. loaded ahead of time to make it a lot easier on yourself. Yeah, but I have found using it for Fast Food Boulevard really comes in handy. Mm -hmm. That advice comes with one caveat. There is no mobile order for the taco truck nor for lard lads. A new kid zone coming this year. New for 2024 DreamWorks Land. Now, at the time of this recording, it is not open. It is still under construction. And I anticipate it being that way for the first half of the year, but hopefully by the second half of the year, DreamWorks Land is open. We're often asked how many days you should plan to come to Universal. So on average, I would imagine at least one day per park, being that there's three parks, but you might want to build in a bonus time for rides that you might miss. Yeah. And when you say three parks, you're talking about, uh, you're including Volcano Bay, the water park. Exactly, yeah. so if you're planning on going to Volcano Bay, build in an extra day just for that park. Yeah, I sort of like to do it this way. Um, do each park, you know, the, the things you most want to do, mm -hmm. so a day at Studios, a day at uh, Volcano Bay, a day at Islands of Adventure, and then have a day that, kind of a makeup day. The stuff you missed on those days, go back and do them on like the extra day. Yeah, be able to walk around, yeah. keep it slow, keep, you know, different kind of pacing on that extra day. So four days, maybe five, if you just want one day as a resort day. 
We're gonna start making our way over to Islands of Adventure right now. Everyone always asks me something about Hagrid's. We'll talk about Hagrid's, but I feel like we're given a lot of information. So you may want to watch this video multiple times before your trip here. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> Hollywood Boulevard is home to a lot of character meet and greets. I would advise you, participate. They're a lot of fun. These people are very good at their jobs. They love it when you play along. That would be my advice. Just play along with them. Have fun. But stay away from Marilyn. She's all mine. Sorry, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Park shopping, it's a thing. Mm -hmm. That's why most of the rides exit through a gift shop. Smart. <laughs> <laughs> now, what I don't like to see is people carrying their stuff around all day long. Yeah, you don't have to. Don't do that. No. They have package pickup. They sure do. Now, here at Universal, if you if you buy something, you can leave it in the store, and they will bring it out to the store here in City Walk. Right. Plan for it to be about three hours. Yeah. The, the time frame for it to purchase and drop off over there yeah now the thing is uh, when you purchase your items you can also if you're staying on site mm -hmm. have it delivered to your hotel yes. some of them will go a step further and deliver it to your actual room Wow. but uh, if you don't do that at least utilize a uh, package pickup in City Walk is it too obvious to say come during the non busy seasons the non peak season there is a crowd calendar on orlandoinformer.com lets you know when it's going to be crowded, when it's going to be light. If it can, come during the light times. As we head into Islands of Adventure, I would like to mention when it comes to early park admission for this park, you will have the Wizarding World of Harry Potter open, including Hagrid's Motorbike Adventure, and also usually Velocicoaster is open for early park admission. I want to mention this before I forget about it. In regards to express passes, here at Islands of Adventure, Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure does not accept express passes. But you might want to consider purchasing express passes anyway. Save you a lot of time, especially during the busy season. Absolutely. Now the prices of the express passes will vary based on the busyness and the time of season. Right. Yeah. Now I, I recently checked for December. Um, they were going for around 300 bucks. Right. But I checked before, like during the slow, you know, the slow times, and uh, like half the price during the slow season. Right. But uh, so you can look look up to uh, maybe 300 bucks, maybe yeah. more. Exactly. And now, if you stay at those premier hotels, it's included. Right. The premier hotels would be Hard Rock, uh, Royal, Bay. Puerto Bay, and Royal Pacific. Yes. <laughs> you were gonna say one before I said the other. I know. I'm sorry. Different mindset. Exactly. But anyway, if it's in your budget. Consider the express passes. Now over here at Islands of Adventure, most of the rides are outdoors. Whereas studios, most of the rides are indoors. But you should be prepared for any type of weather here in Florida. But I would like to note, the parks seem to be less crowded on rainy days. So take that into consideration. So you may want to utilize Seuss Landing for the kiddos. And also uh, over there in Jurassic Park. Exactly. There's still a lot of yeah. fun stuff for the kids to do and rides to go on yeah. and little play areas for them, even though the kids own it at, at Studios is Club. Right. Oh, yeah. oh, I just remember the name of the place over there in Jurassic Park. Camp Jurassic. There you go. Sue Standing and Camp Jurassic for the kiddos. Yeah. And if they are still too small for the rides, if I ran the zoo, that's a good place for them to just run around. Well, I am happy we made it to Hogsmeade. You know why? Because I think the question I may be asked most, any tips for Hagrid's? Any tips for Hagrid's? <laughs> I have one or two. Yeah. I don't know how good they are, but here they are. So when it comes to Hagrid's Motorbike Adventure, it is always the longest wait in the park. Oh. Either park. Absolutely. I think the best time to do it would be early park admission. Because mm -hmm. I think that's going to give you your shortest wait time. The only caveat with that is sometimes it doesn't open on time. It opens delayed. Yes, that can be a possibility. Another great time to do it would be late at night. Before park 
park closing, about when everybody else is eating dinner, that's when you try to get on Hagrid. You would say, what, is it like this though? Let's say the park is gonna close at nine. Are you saying get in, in line at 8.59? Is that what you're well, saying? Well, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> See what we mean? <laughs> we have some tips. We don't know if they're that good. <laughs> Try early parking mission. My apologies if you wake up early and you come here and it opens the lane. Oh, that's so frustrating. Yeah. But, but I think it's the best. It's the best tip I can give you. Now I am a bigger guy. I've never had any problem fitting on any of the Universal rides, but they do have test seats. So if you're concerned about that, they usually have a test seat like at the beginning of the queue before you get inside, and then also inside the queue, usually a test seat. Yes, now over here at Velocicoaster, I have a warning, and Ooh. I kind of had to find this out the hard way. Oh, let's go, let's go to the test seat then. Yeah. So here's the issue if you're going to get on Velocicoaster in this ride vehicle, don't get chicken winged. Yes, they actually have a tray for it. Yep. So watch that elbow. Don't get that elbow caught like that. Nikki got it caught once and got a nasty bruise. Horrible, yes. So make sure you just grab both hands and bring it down like yeah, this. Yeah, watch so that. Yeah. Tuck those elbows. Yep, even the team members like, oh, you got chicken winged. Yeah, so they know it happens. Yes. You guys be careful though. Yeah, tuck those elbows in. Now, if you're visiting Islands of Adventure, they have Toon Lagoon here. Yes. It's the home to the big water rise that will get you soaking wet if you want to. That's true. So if you know you're coming in here for that, be prepared. Otherwise, they do, they do sell some stuff. Exactly, they sell like clothing and towels and even flip-flops and shoes. Yeah. Because we did meet a subscriber that lost a flip-flop or shoe on Velocicoaster. the Velocicoaster and needed to buy a pair when he was here. So, well, it yeah. happens. They sell ponchos, towels, even like swim trunks. They do. <laughs> so, if you don't come prepared, at least come prepared to spend some money. Yeah, Universal's <laughs> got you covered, don't worry. You know what we haven't talked about? A tip? Using single rider lines. Yes, it can be an advantage. Most of the time, but not all the time. Not all the time. Now some rides I wouldn't advise, like Velocicoaster, it doesn't seem to work out so well. Yeah. And then the other thing is, I would say it works best in the mornings, in the AM. Okay. I would say that Velocicoaster works out better than Hagrid's. There's been oh, yeah. times when you've seen people, oh, I'm gonna skirt off and go to single rider. You're right. And we actually kind of even beat them from the regular line. So just be aware that that can happen. Yeah, so those, yeah I, I think Velocicoaster is a bit better than even Hagrid. Yeah, those are the two, Hagrid's and Velocicoaster. I would not recommend so much using single rider, right. but you should try it other places. And like I said, the morning tends to be better yes. as far as utilizing single rider. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, we always advise this, Nikki, is if you've never been on the ride before, I mean, a lot of these queues are really awesome. Right. Um, you know, go as a family the first time, enjoy the queue, like for Gringotts, mm -hmm. you know, but then once you've ridden it once with a family and you guys want to maybe, you know, cheat, cheat the time a little bit by go single rider. Yeah, and experience just the ride itself. Yeah, that'd be the time to do it. Absolutely. And, fun fact, we actually did our first music video ever on the single riders. Um, a subscriber gave us um, permission to use a song that he yeah. had written and we did a music video. So. I really, really want you guys to see it. We spent uh, probably the longest vlogging day ever. For like a three minute video. It. Exactly, but um, love that video, yeah. fantastic. So we'll put a link in the description box of it so you can enjoy that too. <laughs> and as we walk through Marvel Superhero Island, I guess we should also mention, maybe you should perhaps join a Facebook group or two. There are several Facebook groups dedicated to Universal, uh, some to specific rides, some to uh, just anything really. They're a good place to study up on things before you come and you might make a new friend or two. And now for those of you who have made it this far into the video, I have a special treat for you. The most important tip of the day, subscribe to this channel. I'm here a lot. I do weekly update videos. I do specialty videos such as top sixes. So for you guys, you now know the biggest tip. Subscribe to Rick's Flicks. And as always, don't miss the magic, don't miss the fun. See you next time. His name is Rick. Her name is Nikki.
Subscribe.